good morning so the when eform invited me for this topic uh, to talk about the role of authenticity and transparency uh, it was a very good point that resonated very well with us as a new age d2c company and i'll also talk to you for a second about why this topic is so relevant today gone are the days where a company like hul or png could build a brand purely on two things one was distribution and two was marketing dollars so earlier you could have a product that could barely and i'm not talking about <coughs> these specific companies i'm generally talking about how products were being launched you could have a product that was barely meeting the uh, norms or the uh, uh, what the customers expected or uh, it could just be an inferior product also but if you had the distribution might that means throughout the country you were present on the shelves of stores because you are such a big company and you're paying for the shelf space that was point number 1 Point number two was there were only few limited media opportunities. There was television, there was print, and there was radio. And to access those, you needed crores and crores of rupees. So both of those could enable anybody to build a brand if you if those two enablers were there. But today, that is just not possible. Uh, that is primarily because customers now can access these products without this distribution might. through multiple offline channels and multiple online channels including amazon flipkart and so forth and secondly the marketing dollars required to launch something has completely changed you can now start with a 500 rupees per day marketing budget and then learn and figure out things that that work for your brand so given these two and the third important point being customers now cannot be silenced back then if it was an inferior product so what the trials would suffer sampling would suffer but if you continue to be on the shelf space you would have some market share today it is next to impossible to do that customers will go and shout out on social media that this is what i liked this is what i did not like just look at what navel just now said he was kind enough not to name the brand but he was very clear that he did not like how the company treated him and his wife so that is something that will kill a brand overnight so given these three changes authenticity and transparency are the two pillars that you cannot buy <coughs> through money and that's why i feel the the this presentation should be viewed uh, through that lens <coughs> quick 2 uh, minute introduction about us uh, ankit and i are the two co-founders we started we fit about 7 uh, and 1/2 8 years ago uh, we started being a pure mattress company expanded into uh, 2016 is when we started we started with only mattresses as our core products ankit is brilliant with consumer understanding uh, what they like what is the specification what is the chemistry of materials and then uh, creating products that are affordable and i invest a lot of my time on this demand side how do you market products how do you build out a story for the public how do you respond and deal with every touch point with the consumer uh, once we started with mattresses slowly we expanded into accessories Uh, which means pillows bed sheets and so forth so we became a sleep company and within about 3 4 years we expanded into home solutions uh, which is a glamorous way of saying that we are also a furniture company uh, so we now have uh, sofas wardrobes bedside tables the anything that you need in your home uh, we now do that and we in 2022 last year we opened india's largest furniture factory there's a small av clip uh, down the line which will tell you why we did that and how big it is uh, and the last part is today we now have about 40 retail stores again going back to authenticity and credibility you need to be where the consumers are and for us that turned out to be ebos exclusive brand outlets that company owns and operates from what we learned from our own personal experience i wouldn't go so far as to call this a framework or advice but let me put it this way that this is what we have learned in our seven and a half years the pillars for trust and transparency are product which means what is the product that you're delivering uh, to your customers homes the customers who are they why are they to be uh, targeted how are they to be targeted and how can you add value to their lives and gone are the days where you could just do a demographic profile of customers 
and say income level, city level, age, gender, that era is dead. You, today you need to do a lot more about psychographic profiling. Irrespective of their age and demographic and city, how are they behaving? Where are they consuming data to say that this is a credible brand? How do they make decisions? Where do they research? Uh, who do they ask? Who influences the decision of their buying? So understanding a customer's psychographic profile and then catering to that is another very important pillar. Community is going beyond customers. Can you get a bunch of completely unknown strangers to become your evangelists, your advocates because they could be your customers, they could be the media, they could be your suppliers, they could be your vendors, they could be your employees. But can you build a community of people that are going to talk about you and talk about you in a positive way even when you are not in the room? Uh, and people, for us, this is about our own team members, wake fitters. We have about uh, 1,500 uh, full-time employees, another 1,000 contractors. We, uh, we now have about 40 experience centers, 6 factories, 16 warehouses. Uh, it's a large sprawl. But how do you ensure that for them, Wakefit is not just a place where they get a paycheck? It is something more than it. How can they think of us as a team that they would do anything for? That's the people part. And lastly, category. In a country like India, where we are going to constantly max out the available audience, you need to be able to constantly grow the category. If the category doesn't grow, and you are not doing the job as a market leader to grow that, your growth also tapers off. So I'd like to cover these aspects. <coughs> so this is about product. Uh, even seven, eight years ago, you would have seen or heard or somebody in your family telling that, oh my god, don't buy home mattresses. Because you sleep on it, you're going to get uh, heat emitted. Uh, it's not good for your back. It's uh, poor quality. It doesn't last as long as cotton, all of that. That is because this whole industry was rife with a lot of adulteration. Uh, manufacturers would add something known as fillers that fill up the foam space, but ultimately it is not genuine good quality foam with the right density. So that would make you, first of all, feel a lot of heat when you lay it on because your body heat would react with that and then that reaction would take care in that material. Second, it would not, not last long. If, uh, and those are the days where they would not give you long warranty. So these products would not last more than two, three, four years or so. And then you yourself would throw it away because it is poor quality. So, but for us, we were never, right from day one, a trader saying buy from somebody and sell it to consumers. We were always a full stack company, which means do your own R&D, do your own production, do your own delivery, do your own installation. So this gives us tremendous control across the value chain on how to control costs and pass it on to the consumers. And secondly, how do you ensure that the customers know that what they're getting is 100% pure? Because we do it in our factory, we know that there's no adulterants added, there's no fillers added. Because we buy the wood for our furniture, we know how much pains we go through to go to the forest auction, forest department auctions, buy the uh, wood in ethical manner, treat it in Rajasthan, which is the right uh, climate to treat wood, then bring it to Bangalore to make furniture out of it. So every single part of the value chain, if you own, you can without doubt explain to your consumers that, hey, this is a pure product that you're buying, and we stand behind it. Um, if you have any problem, we are there for you. Today's consumers are much, much, much more than willing to forgive you for a mistake but they're not going to be forgiving you for shirking your responsibilities. If you say that, hey, this batch was screwed up, no point, I will take it back, give you an alternative product, they will forgive you. In a minute, I can give you thousands of such cases. But if you say, no, this is not my responsibility, or see this fine print in my terms and conditions that this policy does not exist, so I'm not doing it, so go ahead and uh, suffer through the pain of owning this product, that is when you're shirking your responsibility. So that's why for us, this full manufacturing transparency was very, very important because the more people know, we created multiple videos around how the foam is tested. The foam is tested for 80, th there's something known as a pounding test. So in our factory, in the lab, every sample of foam that comes out goes through that 80,000 pounding. So there's a cylinder of a certain height which pounds the foam for about 80,000 times 
at the end of the 80,000 times, we are going to measure the firmness once more. If the firmness has deteriorated, then that's a bad, bad batch of foam. Similarly, there is something known as uh, humidity and temperature testing. So the foam is put into that uh, chamber and then tested. Why do you have to do this? Because India is many countries within one country. You have Rajasthan, which is super dry and hot. You have Jammu Kashmir, which is super cold. You have Chennai and Mumbai, which are very, very hot and humid. And the quality of the product should remain the same for 10 years, 15 years when we give that warranty. So to do that, we are able to test and then do that. So when we did videos and we got people talking about it, when we got journalists to visit our factory and then create stories around it, it was much, much more trusted than uh, what we would have just said. So this, we, throughout this journey, we've also spoken about specific other brands which have done brilliantly because we don't want to just keep giving wake fit examples. So Whole Truth did a brilliant job. I don't know if you're aware of it. This is a food company. And they were earlier known as And Nothing More. Uh, because they're from the genesis, they were a purpose-led brand. And they said that there are a lot of adult trends, a lot of preservatives, a lot of non-food items going in your food. So they said, we'll be very honest and ethical with what we put in. Secondly, we are going to be honest with what we display on the uh, packaging. So that you don't have to worry about what fine print is there, what is not there. And we'll take care that you only eat genuine food. So that whole purpose-led thing was very much uh, strong even today. And we hear that a lot of lawsuits are also being filed by current incumbents who want to continue to do that. So when you are purpose-led, I think that is where people will stand by you and customers will continue to support it. Uh, could you please the AV, please? This is a five-minute AV, but I'll only stop at about a minute, minute and a half. This is the furniture factory, it's about 50 kilometers. Make is to enable people to create can, beautiful Can you mute it, please? Things. And this can only happen if we have a very smart factory. Can you mute it, Which can please? deliver our product. Yeah. So, this is, this is the factory that I was telling you about. It is a spread over 6 lakh square feet. To give you a sense, that's about 14 acres. And we realize that the only way to manufacture the uh, product in an ethical, transparent manner is to do all of those things that I told you earlier. So we realized that in India, there was absolutely no automated manufacturing, uh, and which will bring down the cost. Can you see those robotic arms? So the whole furniture, from the raw material all the way to coming out as packaged, is done by robotic arms and automated conveyor belts. And this enables us to bring down the cost of production from a typical 22-23% of the selling price to about 7% of the selling price. So, what do we do with this? We pass it on to consumers. That's why if you go to our website and check out our products, they are about 30%, 25% cheaper than any large brand that you might see in India. So, this uh, dream that we had and has always been is that can we democratize access to great products at an affordable price point? Uh, so that is the genesis of this factory and uh, we've continued to source, continue to produce and then ship it and deliver to consumers' homes. We've gone to the crazy level of having, we are today probably the largest employer of carpenters in India, even more than urban company. Because we realized that people weren't trained to go and install products. So we created Wakefit Gurukul and then uh, got them trained and they now go to consumers' homes and then install products. <clears throat> second is customers, the second pillar. And uh, here uh, we realize that no matter how much we are, as a brand are going to speak, people are always going to believe other people like them. So that's why if you interview our consumers, you will see that nearly 50-60% of our consumers have either heard about us through family or friends or they've seen a verified Amazon review by the way, we have about 7 lakh uh, uh, reviews across Amazon, Flipkart, uh, Facebook, Google. Largest in India in this industry. Largest. And this is not something that somebody by throwing money can capture because this has taken us 8 years to get there. Uh, we have serviced about uh, 2 million customers, which is 20 lakh people. A small drop in the ocean and long way to go. But this is we realize if people are going to be talking about their stories and how Wakefit helped them, then others will believe it. So we said we have to make unfiltered, unscripted, real conversations. We said it's not going to be about a snazzy video and great supers and 
really, really good graphics. That's not what we intended to do. We said we are going to just talk about the real stories of real customers. You will see people talking about how uh, one of their uh, one of their partners is a pilot, and so they have very irregular sleep. So they were looking for a product that would enable them to uh, sleep uh, very well. And so they looked, they researched. These were the things that they compared, and then they purchased. And then they loved using it. Another lady talks about how during her pregnancy, uh, she used to get back pains, and she constantly was looking for a product that worked well. And because of the pandemic, if my memory is right, her parents were also here. And uh, she, says, she jokingly says that after a while, I got this big fit mattress, but after a while, my dad and I were both uh, trying to outplay each other on who was going to get to sleep on the big fit mattress. So real people, real stories, people with arthritis, people with back pain, people with sleep issues, uh, people who couldn't afford a dining table earlier, uh, people who uh, couldn't even fathom how an L-shaped sofa, sectional sofa, could be available for 25,000 rupees when the whole world is selling it at 50,000, and then they loved it. Then they needed it for a specific purpose, and it is a story behind that. It's not a statistic. It's a person. It's a human. Um, and that is what we spent a lot of time uh, in putting together. And these stories have garnered uh, lakhs and lakhs of views because it is so real. We didn't want to make it like a film. Again, on this, no better example than Amazon. We really, really look up to them. I don't know how many of you have a seller accounts on Amazon. I don't know how many of you must have been consumers on Amazon. If you have a problem and you call the call center, you, you will not see that kind of ownership anywhere else. And I'm not talking about blindly saying, ha, refund kar denge, man. It is about total ownership. They will actually say, hold on, I'm going to find this. This is the data that we have. This is what you can do. This is the department you can contact. This is the phone number that you can give. And this is a normal employee. It is not somebody who has huge ESOPs or they're a VP in Amazon. They're a normal employee. But the mission that each of them believes in, that if a customer has called me and I have to solve it, that is really, really admirable even at this size. So what I told you, Big Fit Stories, Happy Home Stories was about that. How our products have changed people's homes and made them from houses to homes. That was what the story was. The community, I told you about how to get people to talk. Many of you may have or may not have heard. Uh, we, three years ago, we created this property called Sleep Internship. Uh, and we kept seeing in the newspaper and media about how some businessman was super successful, but uh, because he was just working 20 hours a day, how the Prime Minister Modi barely slept, and that's why he's the leader of India. So we said, this is not going to work. If you look at any, any person who's at the forefront of innovation or physical capabilities in their field, look at LeBron James. Look at Roger Federer, look at Oprah Winfrey, Ariana Huffington. They are at the forefront of what they are doing in their creative or physical field. And all of them prioritize sleep. They say 9, 10 hours is what I need for me to recover and function at my best. So if sleep is the small trick that can open that superhuman power, how do we get people to talk about it? And how do we do it in a fun way that is not preachy? So we came up with this idea called sleep internship and we said, we are going to go around the country and choose people who are passionate about sleep over Netflix, over their boss, over their partner, over their kid. And they prioritize and value their sleep. And we ran this campaign and every year we've got, first year was about 1.6 lakh applications, second year was about 5 lakhs, third year was another 5 lakhs. And we chose these people, we gave them our products and sleep trackers for free. Their data was not used by us. This was not a quiet way to pull data for R&D. This was purely to talk about this concept. And what we did was get them to post on their social and on our own sleep internship website so that people could actually see their stories of transformation. And I can see a lady yawning, uh, but <laughs> I, was, I was just, that's exactly what we want to uh, try and say that it's okay to sacrifice a conference to sleep in a little bit. It's okay to uh, prioritize sleep because you are actually a different person. You are actually a better person. You are more uh, 
creative in your work you are more patient with your irritable kid you are much much more uh, sorted in your thoughts and you won't believe it sleep is not just rest sleep is a thousand other things that you have not aware at all um, the to take an extreme case people who have gone through physical and sexual abuse and they when they have really good quality sleep they are able to process those emotions much deeper much faster and forget the traumatic parts and move on with their life much faster than those who suffered but couldn't sleep so so research has shown that long term memory short term memory rest recovery everything is possible if you just have good sleep uh, so we wanted to prioritize that and every year we have chosen these sleep interns given them each 1 lakh rupees given them our products and all we have requested is you talk about it you be evangelist about how this has helped you uh, that is the power of community it's a it's a flagship property people love it every year people wait for it uh, and then apply and contact us <coughs> similarly uh, nika you must have all seen they created something known as the nika army where they have not just said that we'll work with influencers in a very tactical manner they have said we'll create people who are really strong evangelists and during the our say for example hot pink sale um, we will get them to talk about the top picks of the sale why they should buy how they can use uh, in tier 2 towns these people even go and run workshops in those uh, nike stores and people are invited to attend for free and whatever products are there as samples display during the product can buy this is driving sampling adoption they get brands to partner with them to do that because they are a marketplace so it is going beyond a very tactical engagement with influencers and saying that i'll create a community of people who are passionate about uh, nike and its products so similarly we have done the sleep internship we've done the uh, jomo which is joy of missing out uh, just like everybody talks about fear of missing out we said we have to create something called joy of missing out and this has become a newsletter that has been subscribed by thousands and thousands of people uh, and the idea is it's okay to chill it's okay to take a bit of downtime it's okay to get your center back uh, and this has resonated a lot and even the podcast of jomo has picked up very very well investing in our people if our team members are not happy and we are not living that purpose then it's all hogwash i'm just doing it for pr so we said how do we do it for our own team members so when we came back from the pandemic and everybody was requested to come back to office two days three days a week we realized that lot of them missed their afternoon naps they would get these 15 20 minutes time uh, before the kids came back home or before the craziness of the second half of the day started immediately after lunch just take a small breather uh, and when they came back to work it was a big change suddenly after one and a half years of the pandemic so we said we created this campaign called do se dhai sone do na bhai so we said in our own company we would ensure that hr would blocked out 2 to 2:30 even to this day it is live on my calendar also 2 to 2:30 no meetings can be set up and our team members are free to do whatever they want uh, you won't believe the results some of them go out for a walk some of them listen to music some of them meditate some of them put their head down on their desk and go to sleep some of them go out for a smoke which is not so good but but they find what they want to do and recenter themselves for the second half of the day and and secondly we created something known as i don't know if you are aware we created no questions asked 100 day return policy for our mattresses nqa no questions asked so similarly we realized that lot of people men women for various reasons are not comfortable putting in that box in the leave application form saying reason for leave sometimes it's very clear right it's a wedding my kid school a passport appointment it's very clear you put it there but sometimes you don't want to share it you are <coughs> you are having period cramps you are having a low day you're feeling depressed that day you just had a crazy last week and you just want to downtime just want to watch movies at home you don't want to put that there so we said we'll create a separate category of leaves called nqa wellness leave no questions asked so for if you if you an employee goes to our hrms and chooses that category they do not have to enter the leave box the reason box and they can just go apply and it is auto approved 
so that is a simple thing that we did and you must have already seen dream 11 razor pay again investing a lot in their employees i think last 30 seconds do i have time for another 1 minute or so yeah so the last thing is category i told you that if you are a market leader you are always at risk that category itself is not growing so you have to do the job of growing the category so we created something known as the great indian sleep score card for the last 6 years we have been collecting and publishing sleep patterns and trends of indians we are the largest repository in india of sleep pattern data for indians <coughs> i think between these 6 years or so we have about 2 to 1 and a half lakh respondents sharing their sleep patterns what wakes them up what do they do before bed time uh, how many times they might wake up uh, what happens to men versus women for example we constantly find out that women sleep less than men um, they are slightly later to bed than their male counterparts and slightly earlier uh, to wake up than their male counterparts no matter what hashtag share the load you do women are still sacrificing more of their sleep similarly we find that bombay sleeps much less than say calcutta um similarly we find that the year that jio was launched people moved from saying the reason for staying up at night was social media to saying that we now are awake because we are watching and consuming content on otts so data became cheaper so just see how external factors are constantly impacting our sleep and when we publish this every year during world sleep day in march is when we publish this and journalists wait for it and every year they follow up because they are now the most credible trusted source and when we use this data in social media in our content pieces in how we communicate the story of our products to the consumers how we innovate for our products how we democratize access to the products all of this then say feels that okay they are not doing it just for pr they really mean it they re- they are doing it for their employees they are doing it for their customers suppliers they are also doing it to broadly educate the consumer so i think that's the mission that we had and that's what we have always done uh, just a final slide last year we ended at about 825 crore in revenue this year we are chasing 1100 crore target the idea is to not chase a revenue number not chase a size number the idea is to become india's most loved home and sleep company and uh, we have built followers not one follower has been bought we don't care about buying uh, 2 million customer service 7 lakh reviews and uh, our dream is to continue to build something that survives beyond ankit and me if there is a company that survives beyond us i think that's the ultimate dream uh, so thank you for having me if there is time we can take one question or two questions or we can wrap it up as per thank you